We're taking heavy fire from. This is hell. Every day, firefight. They've been taking incoming rounds from at least two directions on these hills. NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel takes you on patrol with the soldiers of Viper Company in one of the most treacherous and isolated regions of Afghanistan. Find the left of the draw! Now! A year on the front lines. See where the smoke is? The gray smoke? Shoot it! Fighting a war launched on October 7th, 2001. It's definitely frustrating at times to feel like we don't get a lot of attention out here. That is growing more difficult. The best of the best guys that we've had out here are gone. Christ almighty! And more controversial. Okay, so six wounded, one KIA, over. There's incoming fire right now. We're using this Humvee for cover. Everything changes in a split second. We had to be on it. I always think about afterwards how close we came to it being a disaster. All right, y'all ready? The only way into Afghanistan's remote Korangal Valley is by helicopter. Six miles long, five miles wide, 5,000 feet high. In October 2008, the Korangal is the most dangerous war zone in Afghanistan, nicknamed the Valley of Death. Almost as soon as we arrive, we understand why. The Taliban are attacking a U.S. patrol. Elevation 1034, four rounds HE prox, one ready. To fire back, the soldiers drop mortars. They've already fired 1,500 mortars Fire. in three months. Fire. Fire. Rouse complete on one. For the next year, this will be home for the 150 Fire. soldiers of Viper Company. Based in Texas, Viper Company's mission is to clear the Taliban from the Korangal Valley. But the soldiers readily admit often they can't see the militants they're shooting at can't see anybody out here. In Iraq, you can see where you're shooting at. Here, I haven't seen anybody since I've been here. It's been crazy. You can't see the enemy. You can't see because there's just too many rocks and trees mm -hmm. and caves. And they're fastest men alive. Hell yeah. <laughs> By far. <laughs> so fast, the 200 Taliban fighters in the Korangal are almost never seen. Except in their own propaganda videos. The fighters know the terrain. They ran this mountain, the one way in the distance. They ran that mountain in about 20 minutes in sandals, all the way from the bottom to the top. To find the Taliban, the troops have to go off base, on foot. Marches that can last more than 24 hours. Up steep, narrow trails that are sometimes booby-trapped. If you look at it, the pin is still in. This one is a crude flash grenade on a tripwire, protecting what had been a Taliban camp. This would tell me that they are probably set up here overnight when they want to sleep. American outposts like the ones in the Korangal are supposed to secure Afghanistan's major cities. American soldiers are in the mountains to keep the militants busy and contained out here so they don't move into densely populated areas. But with only 150 men to cover all of the Korangal, Viper Company has had to spread out. The soldiers here are positioned on five separate outposts. Each base is like a tiny fortress in the mountains. One of the little outposts is called Restrepo. It is the tip of the spear. Getting to Restrepo is a two-hour hike up a mountain. This is a very, very tough climb. Uh, with our team, producer Madeline Harringer. It sucks. I quit Richard Engel. And cameraman Bredden Edwards. If you want to join the Richard Engel show, get fit first, I tell you. <laughs> it's steep and in places so exposed. All right, y'all ready? We run zigzag to avoid sniper fire. Finally, we make it to Restrepo. 
The outpost is attacked three times a day. And from close range. Twice cursed, Restrepo is the most dangerous outpost in Afghanistan's deadliest valley. The Taliban open fire from a few hundred yards away. Get some! But Private Jordan Taylor's gun keeps jamming. Hey, hey, 240 is down. The weapons are new. But with all the wear and tear, they sometimes lock up. A machine gun isn't working either. Give me another weapon up here, Tower 1. The Taliban in squads of three to five men keep moving in. Second time in less than 24 hours, this outpost has come under attack. Some of the incoming rounds were so close, we could hear the crack past our heads. Now they're putting out suppressive fire to try and push back the attackers. They've also pulled in mortar fire. That 100 drop five zero five four effect over. The mortar teams fire wherever they think the Taliban might be. After about 15 minutes, this attack on Restrepo is over. Hold fire! How volatile is it? How quickly do things change here? Uh, in a split second. Everything changes in a split second. We had to be on it. During the fight, our cameraman, Breden, is hit by a bullet casing. It seems to happen to an injury. Um, and, uh, but it was from one of the shells firing out of the... The, uh, machine gun, so that'll uh, I mean not to get in the way of that. It's just a scratch. Madeline cleans him up with a baby wipe. Do you have any training for this? No, I don't think anyone would consider me a very good nurse. This is not in the description of a producer, but I'm going to do my best. I paid my insurance. <laughs> it's our first taste of the harsh, unforgiving life on Restrepo. The platoon spends the rest of the day cleaning and repairing their weapons so they won't jam again. All right. Works. If the weapons fail, Restrepo could be overrun with deadly consequences. The outpost is manned by only about 20 soldiers. It's so small and primitive, Taylor, a cowboy from Texas, has to carve out a nearby guard post with a sledgehammer and use the chips to fill sandbags. They call this place the rock quarry. Yes. This was all rock. This all looked like that. Oh, so you had to dig all this out? All this was broke down. So it's been all busted. The soldiers know they're miles from any backup. As far as worrying about being overrun, um, really, you, you just focus on, on what we can do to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, whether, whether it be them sending us more men would help. Um, we really, we don't have that luxury right now, so we just do what we can with what we have. To unwind, the soldiers lift weights on the mountainside. I hope I don't cry now. <laughs> Look at photographs. And that's the beautiful wife. And play cards, endless games of spades. Look at this. Keeping them in line is Sergeant John Penich. You know, take out space. We should have won that last hand if I would have known the rules correctly. Big, friendly, already nominated for a Medal of Valor, Penich is like the big brother of this tough little family. On the table is Viper Company's motto, Damn the Valley. But as they play, the medic specialist Jeremy Shepler gives IVs to fight dehydration. It isn't exactly sanitary. The men are filthy. Mealtimes are small distractions, too. Chili, chili, chili. But they only have army rations. Most of the men have already lost 10 to 20 pounds. To make the meals more interesting, they experiment with odd combinations, like Richardson's tuna fish, mayonnaise, and jelly sandwich. There's little hot food because there's no electricity. No showers, either. Just one outhouse, laundry, hangs everywhere. Not surprisingly, Restrepo is infested with fleas. Private Matt Fowler from Nampa, Idaho, has bites up and down his legs. 
Like many here, Fowler wears a flea collar around his belt loop, and he twisted his ankle. Scale of 1 to 10, how bad your pain right now? That's about a 6. Doc Shepler wraps it up. Many of the men already have joint problems from all the hiking. What's it like here? I mean, what's life like on this base? It's a really weird camping trip. Living conditions are kind of rough, but definitely livable. 